I can talk all day about low porosity hair because my hair is low in porosity. Just like I did in the high porosity video right here. I'm gonna go over the characteristics and the pros and cons of low porosity hair. Then I'm gonna show you real solutions and how you can slowly increase your hair's porosity to a more manageable level. Low porosity is one of those characteristics that takes a lot of us a long time to recognize. Because when you first go natural, you're so excited about this fresh start that you wanna do everything perfect. So you just assume that your hair is damaged or that it's high in porosity. So you pack your hair up with products. You LOC, LCO, co-wash, you basically moisturize the hell out of your hair. After a while, you realize your hair is breaking, it doesn't act right, and it's hard to style. So you do some research and then you realize, ah, my hair is low in porosity. So maybe my hair doesn't need all this product. So if you're newly natural and you're watching this video, I hope it helps you avoid a setback that a lot of us low porosity girls experienced. Not all low porosity hair types are created equal because porosity is an infinite spectrum. So the only reasonable way to approach this topic is by placing each range into three groups. Your hair may not fit all these characteristics I'm about to go over, but if you fit most of or even some of these characteristics, it's safe to assume that your hair is somewhere within the low porosity range. I've posted a video in the past showing you different tests you can use to determine what porosity your hair is. But as with all tests, there are many flaws and errors involved. So a lot of you are left still not knowing what porosity your hair is. I'm gonna warn you in advance, this video is super old it's not some of my best work and I don't know what I was thinking with the nails. I was in grad school, I was a geek, and I was trying to discover my style. Anyways, if testing your hair is not your thing, understanding the characteristics and observing your hair's behavior is a better option because A, it's more accurate, and B, it's a better way to become a true expert in your head of hair. Unlike hair that's high in porosity, low porosity hair takes a longer time to dry when it's soaking wet. Here's why. The function of the cuticle layers of a hair strand is to protect the more fragile layers underneath from all types of things like wear and tear, excessive heat, and water overload. So when hair with tight cuticles gets wet, water slowly seeps in, your tight cuticles make it possible for your hair to take in what it needs and reject the rest in the form of water beads. These water beads are a big indication that your hair is low in porosity. The water that did penetrate are held in tightly and slowly escapes over time. Hence why if your hair is low in porosity, it can feel like forever for your hair to dry. And if you put product on top of your soaking wet hair, it'll take even longer to dry. I remember when I went through my puff stage, I would wash my hair, add products to it while it was still soaking wet, and it would take days to fully dry. This is not a good thing because too much moisture in your hair for too long can cause inflammation in your scalp, damage your hair follicles, and potentially slow down your hair growth. It can also potentially cause an infection on your scalp. But this potentially big problem has two simple solutions to pick from. Option one, after washing and conditioning your hair, blot it with a paper towel before adding products to it. To me, paper towels do the best job because they soak up a lot of water. If you blot your hair with a paper towel long enough, you'll be able to remove a good amount of water. Option two, you can also use a blow dryer with all the negative talk about heat, I know you're probably a little scared of these, but the reality is that blow dryers have many beneficial uses other than for stretching. But I'm going to post a video hopefully this summer dedicated to heat, which will be especially beneficial if your hair is low in porosity. But overall, make sure your hair is just slightly damp before adding heavy products to it. Since we mentioned products, I think this is the best time to talk about product buildup 
because it's a big issue with low porosity hair types. Product buildup occurs because your tight, flat cuticle layers make it difficult for products like creams, oils, and conditioners to penetrate easily, so they end up just sitting on the surface of your hair strands. As you add more and more product, the layers thicken and harden. It makes your hair feel less flexible, and more importantly, that layer of product blocks the invisible transaction of moisture from the air. Over time, as that layer of product dries out and hardens, your hair strand underneath also dries out too and leaves your hair feeling gummy, stiff, and gross. You'll also notice that your go-to products aren't working the way they used to. There are different severities of product buildup, and any hair type can experience product buildup, but it happens quicker and more easily with hair that's low in porosity. In other words, Product buildup is pretty much an inevitable issue for naturals with low porosity hair. Here's a two-part series I did on product buildup. I break down what type of ingredients to look out for that cause the most product buildup. It's an important topic for all hair types, so I hope you take some time to watch them. Thanks to Nappy Foo, you can find all the links in this video in the description section below. None of us want to spend our money on products just for it to sit on our hair and dry up. So here's the solution. Use heat. Everyone is so scared of heat because of the potential of heat damage. But if used correctly, heat can be very beneficial. In the case of avoiding unhealthy product buildup, the use of indirect heat helps relax your tight cuticles enough for products to penetrate. Invest in a hooded dryer or one of these bonnet dryers. And every time you condition your hair, wear a shower cap and sit under the dryer for 30 minutes or so. You'll notice a huge difference because the heat helps relax your naturally tight cuticles enough for the conditioner to penetrate. If your finances are a little low at the moment, you can also just use a shower cap to generate heat. So every time you condition and moisturize your hair, Wear a shower cap. The length of time you wear it depends on how low in porosity your hair is. If you have super tight cuticles, meaning you have a really hard time with product buildup and really stiff hair, you can afford to leave the shower cap on for an hour or two. You can wear it overnight if you like, just make sure you only do that once in a while because there is such thing as overdoing it. Unless you're purposely trying to do so, Making wearing a shower cap overnight a regular thing can potentially permanently weaken your cuticles and increase your hair's porosity. This condition is called hygro fatigue. Also, this is really important. Before trying out any of these new tips, clarify your hair first. This is super important because if you're gonna walk around with old dried up residue on your hair strands, everything you do is not going to work right and you're going to end up having this false belief that something is wrong with your hair or your hair is quote unquote sensitive to something when it's really just months of residue buildup blocking your hair from receiving it. So please clarify your hair on a consistent schedule. A rule of thumb, if you use a lot of products or you use heavy products, clarify your hair once a month. If you're not as product heavy, clarify your hair once every two months or 10 weeks. Overall, it's important to be consistent to wipe the slate clean on a schedule. In between, you should still continue to wash your hair with your go-to moisturizing cleansers. One last thing before I move on to the next topic. A lot of people claim to have some sort of coconut oil sensitivity. Unless you have a real contact allergy with nut oils, in which case this does not apply to you, most of you will be surprised to know that what's actually happening is that your hair is low in porosity and or suffering from overall product buildup. So when you apply an oil that solidifies easily, like coconut oil, it takes too long for the coconut oil to penetrate because your cuticles are too tight to absorb it fast enough. Over time and with repeated use, what ends up happening is that most of the coconut oil cools and hardens on the surface of your hair and creates a gummy sticky film. For my low porosity viewers watching, before jumping on this quickly growing bandwagon 
and given up completely on a wonderful oil like coconut oil? Try this. First, a little goes a long way, so try not to use too much at one time. And second, after adding coconut oil to your hair, wear a shower cap for like 30 to 60 minutes. Or to speed up the process, hop in the shower. This way the steam helps your cuticles relax a little so the coconut oil can penetrate and work its magic. And according to the United States Department of Agriculture National Nutrient Database, coconut oil has absolutely no protein. So please don't believe anyone that tells you coconut oil is a protein treatment because it's not. This video has taken up way too much of your time in just one sitting, so I'll stop here. Don't worry, I'm posting the rest of this video on Thursday or Friday at noon, Eastern Time. So please don't be mad at me. Follow me on Instagram for access to a catalog of quick tips, exclusive Instagram giveaways, and hopefully some natural hair inspiration. As always, thanks for watching. See you in the next video.